Gentlemen, I have drank the Six Arc Kool-Aid. This is my second AR build that I personally have done. So let's go over some of the components and then we'll get on to the load development. You can see here, I have my basic New Frontier Armory lower, mill spec, nothing's really been modified with the exception of the trigger. The trigger now has, this has been replaced rather I should say, with a Timney 75th anniversary trigger. So very nice, not top shelf, but very nice, very consistent. And since I've been using this interchangeably between all my other uppers, it's been very useful for that. We have a nitrided bolt carrier group from Brownells, if I recall correctly. I got it on sale for like 100 bucks, so definitely worth it. Weaver scope mount, Bushnell scope, the Match Pro 624 optical zoom, mil spec adjustments, 30 millimeter tube, 50 millimeter first focal plane objective lens. Whew, that's a lot. Let's talk about the rail. This is the Ballistic Advantage Logic Rail, which is the equivalent of the Aero Precision Atlas R1, if I do recall correctly. I actually like it a lot. It's pretty light, it's pretty handy, and the way that you install it and latch it onto the barrel nut is quite interesting. I almost forgot to talk about the upper receiver. This is a BCM upper receiver. A Mark I, by the way, not the Mark II, where they have more aluminum near the front to help with heat mitigation. But still, you do have to thermo fit the barrel. As I said, let's talk about the barrel. This is a Shaw Custom Barrel. 18 inch stainless steel, 1 and 7 5 twist, focus. And I wanted something that was fairly, I don't want to say basic, I don't want to say generic, but something that I knew was going to work. And Shaw was a little bit late to the game for making barrels for the Six Arc. And they make uppers for them too, but I wanted to build my own. Because with early, I don't want to say early generations, but I'm going to go, go ahead and say with early versions that people produced for this, trying to add their own little special sauce, there was some gassing issues with this cartridge. This is a rifle length gas system. I believe the gas port side is, is 0.93. I'm going from memory. Don't take that to the bank. But I have a superlative arms gas block on there, an adjustable gas block which I've been enjoying a lot lately. I Basically, all my new builds, I've been placing one on there because if it helps with recoil, and I experiment a lot with powders, and that's, that's actually really nice. And with all that said, I haven't had any issues with this barrel yet. There is a slight segue related to that because I have a bore scope, and with another barrel manufacturer, I've had some issues, but more on that later. Today is more about Stable match in the Sierra Magic King, some actual load development. But lastly, let's move on and let's finish this up and talk about what I have for a muzzle device. Some people might recognize this right away. This is an Ultradyne Apollo Max, and Max it is. This will not make you friends. And not only that, like, see how the ports are angled backwards towards yourself? When you shoot this, you will feel the, the impulse, the shockwave of the muzzle blast. So it's something you kind of have to train yourself to get used to. Also, I double up on hear hearing protection because you you'll probably need it. But all this comes with the benefit of this thing probably kicks less than pretty much all of my other ARs chambered in 223, with the exception of my other Shaw upper, which has a muzzle brake on it. So I'm very impressed by this. It's just really loud. Anyway, let's go talk about our load development. Welcome back, gents. Welcome to my second range trip where I'm doing my 6mm arc build using Stayball Match and 107 grain Sierra Match Kings. I've already done a powder test doing some pretty gross graduations, half a grain, and we found that 26 grains generally was most accurate and also had the most stable point impact. So we're starting there. We're starting at 2.260, otherwise known as mag length, and going down in five thousandths increments. So let's go ahead and take a look at our targets. This is the first group, which, you know, isn't too bad, a little over an inch, but I don't like this double grouping. This is definitely different from the first group I got. So I'm not sure if it's just sheer chance, or if it's the fact that, although the temperature is similar, I have a storm coming in. But... 
In other words, the, the environmental conditions are different and probably different by quite a bit. Our second seeding depth increment, you can see here we still have this double grouping and in general things seem to be moving up. This is a trend going on. This, things fall apart. Then here things get back together and still things are going up in double grouping. Now when we get here, so this would be, let's see, so this would be 2.240. Things tightened up here, and this might actually be slightly under an inch. I'll have to take a photo with Range Buddy to confirm. Then things fall apart, but kind of a similar point to impact for the center. Maybe a little bit to the left, because this is about right there on the line. This looks to be just a little bit to the left. However, it is similar to there. So I think that we're in a node, maybe not... The best node, but a node nonetheless. Things fall apart here. Look at this, huge shift in the point to impact. And we have a flyer all the way out over there. That's weird, that might actually be on me because this, the group spreads apart and yes, it goes vertical, but I see nothing over there. And of course for this, there's nothing over there. So this might be on me, but who knows? Maybe it's just a, a scatter node in terms of seating depth. Moving on, then, things tighten up a bit. Things do go up, but things tighten up a bit. So even though this is pretty accurate too, actually, no, this other one is definitely more accurate. I was like, this looks just as accurate as the other one. We can see here, look at this. It groups just about the same here. And this is only a four shot group. One, two, three, four. We have another gross outlier up there. And since it does seem to be kind of trending upward, this actually might be the group. Because I am seeing some verticality here, kind of starting to spread. So I guess I'm not too surprised by that. Anyway, so I think between 2.245 and 2.235 is definitely the place to be. This, you know, it, it would be nice to get a half inch group. I'm... I've been spoiled by some of my ARs, and so I'm a little bit disappointed, but you want to know something? Anything under an inch is nothing to sneeze at. 